Hey everyone, so I think our fridge freezer is finally dying. It's a 120 volt, 3.1 cubic foot fridge freezer combo. Works great! I suspect that it's actually through no fault of the refrigerator itself, but more the way that I mounted this refrigerator in. If you recall, this was a very rushed van build, so I screwed a bunch of screws into the side where, yes, I know the condenser coils live for this fridge. I suspect that one of those screws has finally punctured one of the condenser refrigerant lines, and it's been slowly losing refrigerant ever since. It still does cool, but the compressor runs and runs and runs and runs. It takes forever to shut off. It does eventually shut off. The thermostat still works. I ruled that out. But I think that it's just finally low enough on refrigerant that it's finally getting ready to get up the ghost. Which is fine. I'm thinking I'll go out tomorrow and pick up a new one. But before I do that, I want to check this out if I'm already planning on getting rid of it and see if I can identify the problem. Okay, so here we are, and yeah, I'm gonna believe that one of these finally punctured one of the condenser coils. You can see two pretty good sized holes there, another one there. The problem is just the bouncing and vibration. The screws are tight in the wood, and this is such a thin metal that it just uh, keeps widening out the holes. One there, one there, one there, one there, another giant one there. And there's probably a couple underneath there as well. The other side, this is the bed side. And <laughs> yeah, you can see a pretty wild hole there. So I guess let's find out what's inside of this thing. So actually very interesting. I thought this entire side would be just totally encased in the condenser coil, but not at all the case. But you can see this is actually just taped with a foil tape directly onto the casing. This is extremely thin metal, but they basically used it as a heat sink for this condenser coil. And also surprisingly, there were no punctures here on this side of the condenser coil, aside from right where I had my latch system right there punctured right down into this coil. Anyway, I've come this far, I might as well peel the rest of it apart. There we go, this is the entire refrigeration system on this unit. Let me post up some measurements for you guys, that way if you're trying to figure out a way to mount this refrigerator into your build, then you have a good idea of the spots that you can and cannot mount anything. You can see that you did run one of the condenser lines completely all the way around the front to keep your um, <laughs> freezer door from freezing onto the unit itself. And other than that, it's a lot simpler of a system than I thought, well, for a $100 refrigerator, I guess I expected something simple. As far as the top, not much on here besides towards the very back. Looks like a little loop right here in the front. All right, let me throw up some dimensions for you guys. Hopefully that's helpful. It's going to be identical on basically any mini fridge that has the same dimensions as this one. They're all manufactured in the same place, same specifications. Anyway, if you do want, go ahead and watch my next video on how I'm going to properly mount the new fridge and a very clever 
door latch solution since this one obviously did not work. Okay, let's get you guys the measurements here on the left side of the refrigerator. So this is the front. Facing that way, obviously the back. This is the bottom. And all of the measurements have been taken off of the metal right there in the back and the absolute bottom of the unit right there. That's not including the feet. It's missing the front feet right there. So for this first section of line, this is the line that continues up on the top, goes down right there. You're going to be one and 15 sixteenths of an inch between here and here. That's centered with that line, one and 15 sixteenths of an inch. For the next coil right through here, this one is going to be four and five eighths of an inch. For the next run right here, this is seven and one quarter inches. For the next line right here, that's going to be 10 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. And the final line right there is going to be exactly 13 inches measured from the back. And also don't forget, you do have that condenser line right along where the freezer is right there, which kind of shoots back down there. You can see goes up and around over there. And then there's also a bit that runs all the way across the front, right in front of both doors. We'll get to that in a minute. And you can also see my puncture point right there from the latch that punctured the line. So that's it for the vertical lines. Let's talk about the rest over here. So this line actually starts right centered at 10 and a quarter inches coming up from the bottom right there. And then right where it begins to make its curve over here, that is at nine and three quarter inch. So really that whole area is just a no zone for any screws. And then for your curves down here, again, spot that you wouldn't want to drill into. It looks like from the beginning of the curve up here, that is three and a quarter inch from the bottom. And then for the low point, this one actually sits a little bit lower, so we're just gonna call this whole area the no zone. That from the bottom is one and seven eighths of an inch to the center of the bottom of this line, one and seven eighths of an inch from the bottom of your fridge up to there. So anything below one and seven eighths of an inch, you're okay to drill into but anything over that, you're kind of getting into this scary part here. Now let's talk about the tops right up here, spots that you wouldn't want to drill into. So from the top of both of these lines, you're at 30 inches. That's coming off of the very bottom right there. Again, this isn't going to include the feet. This is just off the square edge of the fridge. So anything over 30 inches, you're okay, aside from this little line right there. And below that, 28 inches down to the bottom there. So between 28 and 30 inches on the side, that's a spot that you don't want to drill into. Now for our door defrost line, which goes right down there, goes across the front back that way, goes across the front back that way. It comes out right here, runs down, down. So this spot right here, where it first comes out, that is exactly 22 inches up from the bottom. So 22 inches up there, it starts shooting through. Then right here at this point where it makes its descent, that is 18 and three quarters of an inch from the bottom. 
and from the back to that point of descent is five and a half inches right to there. And for where it disappears right down in here, that's just about nine inches from the bottom. So that should give you an idea of all the lines over here that you will want to watch out for if you're gonna do any drilling into the side case of your refrigerator. So here we are on the right side of the refrigerator. So this is now the front. And this down here is the bottom at the bottom of your screen. And the measurements pretty closely mirror the other side, but there are a couple little tricks here. You do have an electrical line from the door switch that runs back to there, which is the thermostat control and light. And those wires run down here. And there are some slight differences. So let me give you the measurements from this side. Now, as far as our vertical lines here, they are actually identical to the other side. And this first one was one and 15 sixteenths of an inch. And the second line here was four and five eighths of an inch. Third line was seven and one quarter inch. The fourth line here was 10 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. And finally, the fifth line right up there was at an even 13 inches from the back casing. So that covers our vertical lines. Now we've got some of the funky stuff coming up. So for these bottom loops right there and there, you'll want to stay out of, and these are measured again from the bottom of the metal, not the feet. You will want to stay out of, looks like one and a half is right where it's at. So about one and a quarter from the bottom, you'll want to steer clear of above that all the way up to three inches is where it ends its curve. So safe under one and a quarter, but anything between one and a quarter and three inches, that's the no zone. And for this little funky one right here, kind of does one of these little loops. The lowest point here, you will be safe under six inches between there and the bottom of the fridge. And then for where it starts going straight again right there, looks like exactly 10 and a half inches from the bottom up to where that stops its loop. So between six and 10 and a half, that whole space steer clear. So this one for the freezer door begins at eight inches up from there. And then it makes its turn right here at 22 inches from the bottom. So eight inches here, goes over, makes its turn at 22 inches up from the bottom, four and five eighths inch from the back. And from there, this line slopes downwards a little bit to about 21 inches up from the bottom. Again, not measuring from the feet. For the wiring right here, that centers right about seven inches from the back and kind of sinks back down underneath this coil right here, which was four and five eighths of an inch from the back. And from the bottom, it comes out pretty much right at 10 inches right there, and then goes inside of the fridge right around 17 and a half inches from the bottom. And then for the top up here, where you want to steer clear, actually exactly the same as the other side, so it starts curving right around 28 inches up from the bottom and then stops its curve right there at 30 inches up from the bottom. And of course, this one over here does go all the way up. So that is a no drill zone. And of course, it has the condenser line that runs right up here for your freezer door defrost. So no screws right there. And that's it for the right side of the fridge. Let's take a quick look at the top. It's pretty simple. Okay, so here we are at the top. 
This is the back of the unit right here where all the measurements were taken from. And simple enough, the line just does a little horseshoe right there, comes back around, goes down the other side. So from the back, it's the same as the sides because it comes up from that coil, which is 1 15 16 7 inch. And as far as the little angle here, let me get you some measurements. So it begins its little curvature right here at three and a half inches from the back, then kind of disappears underneath, but right there, about seven and a half inches from the back. And then for where it does its um, curve, where it's actually parallel with the sides right here, that is eight inches. And then over to this side from the left side of the unit, that measurement is 10 and a half inches. So that's it for the top. Of course, you do have your freezer door line running right through there in the front, so steer clear there. And also for the front, I don't have the exact measurements, but know that the condenser line does enter about back there, loops around down here, loops like that comes up, around, down, and then out the back. So steer clear there. So that's it. That's all there is to this old Frigidaire fridge. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.